additional science biology topic two organisms and energy the second part photosynthesis leaf structure transpiration roots and investigating ecosystems Obviously, plants don't eat food, but they still need glucose for respiration and making proteins. They produce glucose using light energy in a process called photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide from the air and water from the ground react together using light energy to produce glucose and waste oxygen. The rate of photosynthesis depends on how much light, carbon dioxide and water the plant has available and the temperature. These are called the limiting factors of photosynthesis. You need to be able to describe the graph shape showing how each of these factors affects the rate of photosynthesis. Firstly, light. As the amount of light increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases. This only happens up until a certain point. At this point, the amount of photosynthesis would actually be limited by something else, such as lack of carbon dioxide. The second graph for carbon dioxide has the same shape. As carbon dioxide increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases, up until a point where something else is the limiting factor. Temperature has a different effect. As temperature increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases to a maximum. This means there is an optimum temperature for photosynthesis, around about 40 degrees. Beyond this, the rate drops off quickly and photosynthesis stops. This is because the enzymes have become denatured. The main feature of a leaf is its large surface area. To enable maximum absorption of light, it has a thin structure with distinct layers, a wax cuticle particularly on the top surface to reduce water loss. Close to the surface are palisade cells. These contain lots of chloroplasts with the green chemical chlorophyll which absorbs light. On the underside of a leaf is small holes called stomata. These allow carbon dioxide to diffuse into the leaf and oxygen and water to diffuse out of the leaf. The opening and closing of the stomata is controlled by guard cells, which are either side of the hole. Transpiration is the movement of water from the roots where it is absorbed from the soil up the stem in tubes called xylem tubes to the leaf where it is used or evaporates from the stomata. It's actually the leaves that drive this process as water is used or lost. It causes more water to be sucked up the xylem. In addition to xylem tubes, there are also phloem tubes. These transport substances such as glucose in the opposite direction from the leaves down and around to the rest of the plant. On the end of the roots are specially adapted cells called root hair cells. They have a long, thin structure to absorb lots of water and minerals. Water is absorbed by osmosis. This is the movement of water molecules across a partially permeable membrane, like a cell membrane, from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration. So it's a bit like diffusion, but just for water molecules, and it occurs across a membrane. Here we can see on the left a very weak or dilute solution, such as that found in the soil. There's lots of water compared to other atoms. Inside the cell, there is a lower concentration of water, creating a strong solution. The water molecules pass out of the soil into the root hair cells. However, it's also how they pass from cell to cell until they eventually reach the xylem. Mineral salts are absorbed by a slightly different way. You don't need to know the details of this, but it's possible to move minerals from a low concentration to a higher one. And this process is called active transport. It requires energy to do this. Investigating ecosystems. Hopefully this is something you've all had to go out for yourselves. There are various techniques that can be used to sample organisms within a habitat and investigate their distribution. The distribution of organisms can be affected by factors such as temperature, light intensity, pH of soil and amount of water available. Firstly, quadrats are square frames that you randomly place down on the ground and you count the number of a particular organism found within it. You then move the quadrat to a different location and compare the findings between the two. A pooter is a small container used to sample small invertebrates by placing the collecting tube over the animal and sucking on the other tube to draw the animal up and into the container. 
Sweep nets are used to catch organisms in grass areas and pitfall traps can be set into the ground so that small animals fall into them and can then be studied.